We are going to be looking at the general chemistry lab for the data sheet for the KSB or solubility product of silver chromate. For the first part, you're going to be working on filling in this chart here, where essentially you'll be taking known concentrations of the chromate ion and getting absorbance values from our from your spectrophotometer. And then you'll use that to essentially determine a molar absorption coefficient for that chemical species for the chromate ion. Some parameters that we'll be looking at include absorbance, path length, and concentration. Absorbance that is measured directly by the spectrophotometer, if it's currently in percent transmittance, just change it to absorbance. For the path length, the specific spectrophotometer or spectrometer that we're using will have a path length of one centimeter. So whenever you see that, just plug one centimeter into the path length. And for concentration, we'll have our concentration being the chromate anion. It's easy to calculate the concentrations. It'll just simply be the concentration on your stock bottle chemical reagent for chromate multiplied the volume you take from that stock bottle divided by the final volume that you bring your solution to. And in our stock bottle, it's going to be, for our lab, 0 0.0024 molars of potassium chromate, which because there's a single chromate ion in that ionic compound, it's a one-to-one -one ratio and becomes 0 0.0024 molar chromate. And then a sample. Say for the first solution that you'll be making, you'll take one milliliter of that chromate ion, and then you'll divide to a new volume of 100 milliliters by adding 99 milliliters of water. So the starting concentration from our stock bottle being 0 0.0024 molar chromate times one milliliter at that concentration divided to a new total volume of 100 milliliters gets us to a concentration of 2.4 times 10 to negative fifth molars of the chromate anion. And the four trials that you'll be doing for part one are going to be using 1, 5, 10, and 15 milliliters of that 0 0.0024 molar solution. Therefore, since the final volume will always be 100 milliliters, according to the following calculations, you should get the final concentrations around what's shown on the right. If your volume is slightly off, then these numbers will be slightly different when you calculate them. Getting into the spectrophotometer parameter specifically, there are four main ones, and they are related in the following way. We have absorption, which is unitless, and that is equivalent to the product of molar absorption coefficient, the path length, and the concentration. The molar absorption coefficient, sometimes called the molar extinction coefficient, it, it depends on the type of ion we are looking at for our absorbance values. Now, essentially, molar absorption coefficient, that will be little a, the path length will be little b, and the concentration will be little c. Absorbance will be capital A, absorbance being what we directly see on our spectrophotometer. For molar absorption coefficient, you'll be asked to solve for that for each different solution. And the units for that will end up being liters per mole kelvin, mole centimeters, or inverse molars per centimeter. The units of our path length, that's the amount of length that a beam of light will pass through our sample. Our test tubes usually have a diameter of one centimeter, so that's why we have a path length of one centimeter for little b. And then the concentration c, that's just your current concentration of the chromate ion for that specific solution. So when you're when you have capital A equaling a b c, when you're solving for molar absorption coefficient, the little a, that'll just be your absorbance divided by b c, where b is just one centimeter, and absorbance and concentration will depend on your specific solution. So at this point, by the time you get to your absorbance readings, as long as you prepare your solutions exactly as described, you should be able to fill out the following parts of your chart, easily three quarters of it. The last part will just be 
the absorbance that you actually get from your spectrophotometer. And then for the part of your data sheet asking you for the molar absorption of the chromium ion, that's just solving for little a. And you'll get a different, you'll calculate each uh, a molar absorption for each trial independently, and then get an average of all of your molar absorptions and get the standard deviation between those four. Now the formula is essentially your molar absorption for any particular trial is just the absorbance you record for that trial divided by B, divided by the path length, divided by the concentration of chromate for that trial. So essentially, we'll be dividing absorbance that you get for trial one by one centimeter times the chromate concentration trial one, which you can calculate as we've done before. And essentially for trial two, three, and four, you'll just be plugging in the absorbance and concentration in for those specific trials to get the specific, specific molar absorption coefficient of that trial. And then that's all you're doing for that part. You're just getting the absorbance values. So for part one, after you do all that, you will then have enough information to make a calibration curve. Sometimes this is referred to as a Beer-Lambert plot. What we have is taking the data from part one, you'll create an absorbance versus chromate concentration plot. And then once you have your values from your chart in part one, plotting absorbance versus your chromate concentration, you'll get a linear trend line, ideally in the form of y equals mx plus b, where y is just the absorbance value X is the chromate ion concentration, and then you'll get your slope and your y-intercept, whatever they end up being. Just to note that the B here is the y-intercept of your graph. It is not the path length from our A equals ABC formula from prior. Once you have that information, you don't need to solve for that by the end of the lab. This is Solving the calibration curve is used for finding KSP, or I should say used for finding your chromate concentration in part two, but you don't need to have the plot made up yet in order to finish the lab. You can do this step. You can make the graph of absorbance versus concentration from part one after finishing your experiment in person. So for part two, all you need to do is make new solutions, and then you will record absorbance values of each of those solutions. And a good rule of thumb is give your, if we're looking at solubility product, uh, if we're looking for a solubility product, give your solutions after they've been made, give them about 10 to 15 minutes for an equilibrium to be established between the solid aluminum chromate or silver chromate and its respective ions since it will not immediately form an equilibrium. And if you record your absorbance too quickly, uh, it could cause some skewed values or experimental error. So for part two, after you've waited about 10 minutes after making your three solutions, you can record your absorbance values and then that's all you need to finish up the in-person experiment. Once you do make your calibration curve from part one's data, simply plug in your absorbance into that linear trend line, and that will get you your chromate ion concentration, which we'll be able to use that value to get our silver concentration. And then we can use both to get a KSP value, get an average of our KSP, and then get a standard deviation of our three solubility product constant values. So in other words, from part one, you, attain, you obtained a values uh, relating absorbance and chromate ion concentration. And once you plug them into a plot, you'll get the y equals mx plus b linear trend line, where absorbance is just the slope times your chromate concentration plus your y-intercept. For part two, essentially you will have absorbance values, but you won't know the chromate ion concentration. So rearranging your linear trend line 
from part one's calibration curve. That will get us absorbance minus our y-intercept divided by the slope ends up being our chromate concentration for that specific trial. Now, if in your linear trend line, you see instead of plus some value, it's minus some value. Like if B ended up being negative 5, then that would be A minus negative 5 or A plus 5. Whenever you have a sign here, whether it's positive or negative, in front of B, keep that for the actual value of B itself. Just so that we don't get confused, this is not the formula from the molar absorptivity portion. This B is the y-intercept, the M is the slope of your linear trend line, but A is still going to be the absorbance. And if you plug in everything correctly, you'll be able to get your chromate ion concentration for those three solutions you make in part two. Because our main equation is the solubility of silver chromate or AG2CRO4, which is a solid, there will be a small amount of that that breaks up into silver ions and chromate ions. Specifically for every chromate ion that we form, or every mole of chromate ion we form, we'll form twice that amount of silver ion, or two times that. Both ions are in the aqueous phase, while silver chromate as an ionic compound is in the solid phase. What we see here is that if we find our chromate concentration in part two from our calibration curve, we can determine our silver concentration by just taking two times the chromate concentration for that trial. And because our solubility product does not depend on the concentration of a solid, but just the ions, we end up getting KSP equaling silver concentration squared times chromate concentration. We're squaring silver concentration because we have to we have the stoichiometry of two all the way in our balanced chemical equation. Now for part two, the very end, you can solve for KSP in a few different ways. You can just calculate, you can just determine the chromate concentration and then times it by 2 to plug it in for the silver concentration and square the silver concentration. Technically, if you want to simplify some terms, since we know that the silver concentration is just twice the chromate concentration, because every time we form one chromate ion, we're forming two silver ions, we can plug in this silver spot with 2 times the chromate concentration. And once we square that entire part, we'll have 4 times the chromate concentration squared, times the chromate concentration, or KSP equaling 4 times the chromate concentration cubed. And because of our linear trend line calibration curve, we know that the chromate concentration is just absorbance minus B over M. And just changing that ABS to A, we still have Chromate concentration is still just absorbance minus our y-intercept divided by the slope of our trend line. And then once we get that value for chromate in a specific trial, cube it and then multiply by 4. That would be the KSP of that trial. Again, you can solve KSP using any of these formulas. They're all equivalent. But ideally, it doesn't matter. So... Based off of what we have from our chart for part two, what you have is your absorbance values, which you will record directly from your instrument. And at that point, you're welcome to leave the actual lab room. And you can continue on with the rest of this if you'd like outside the lab room just to maintain lab safety, since we don't need to be around chemicals anymore to solve the rest of this chart. To find out the chromate concentration part two, take your part one data and get that calibration curve. And chromate concentration in solution one will just be the absorbance you get for solution one, minus your linear trend line intercept divided by its slope. The chromate concentration in solution two for part two would be the absorbance you get for part two, solution two, and then minus B over M. Same thing for the chromate concentration for solution three. And to fill in the 
silver concentration chart, just take your con chromate concentration from the left and times it by two. And then you'll get your various silver concentrations for your three different solutions. And then KSP, your solubility product constant or equilibrium constant, K. Okay? You can just determine that by taking the silver concentration squared times the chromate concentration or through any of the formulas that we shoot, that we went through on the prior slide. Once you get your KSP values, you'll get three separate values. Take an average of them and get a standard deviation. If the standard deviation is small, that means that there isn't much difference between your three different trials, which helps indicate that it's highly accurate. And if you get an average that's still around your three values, that's pretty cool too. The remainder of your data sheet are just going to be three questions that you will be expected to answer for possible sources of error in this experiment. Eh, think critically, but do not include human error because this is a chemical lab report. We do not ever mention human error for the reason being human error is usually something that we can mitigate or remove by simply redoing a chemical trial, but more with better attention to detail. In our words, it's something that we can easily avoid just by being uh, better at lab versus some certain errors that are intrinsic to the specific experiment that can't be avoided. For example, purity of chemical reagents or temperature variation, although in lab, usually that's not a concern. So definitely do not put that if we don't have to, if we actually don't have severe temperature variations. But if you are in a spot where the temperature does change quite frequently, our equilibrium constants are temperature dependent, so that would be a source of error outside of our control. Now, conclusions from the experiment essentially just mention what type of relationship you noticed between absorption and concentration, and just compare your KSP values across multiple trials. Does it seem like it stays relatively stable? Does it seem like it changes quite a lot? And for your accepted value of KSP, just use 1.2 times 10 to negative 12 as the accepted value of our solubility product for silver chromate. And then to determine the percent error from your results, simply take your experimental KSP, more specifically, take the average that you got minus the accepted value, which is reported right here. Of that difference, take the absolute value and divide by your accepted value. And then we'll also multiply by 100% to get it into percent error. And then with all that information, that is enough to conclude your data sheet and hopefully provide a nice guide for processing through the chemical experiment, essentially seeing what minimum amount of data do you actually need to fill in it while inside the lab room. Essentially, all you need to complete the in-person part of the lab, just get your absorbance values for part one and two, and then the remainder can be done outside of the actual lab room. But this concludes our Pre workup for this experiment, so just around minute 19. Likes and subscribes are not necessary but appreciated. But as always, glad to have you all and peace.